Welcome to my class. In today's lecture, we'll be talking about the phylum Echinodermata, generally called the Echinoderms. Echinoderms are marine invertebrate organisms that include the sea stars, they're commonly called the starfish, the sea oceans, the brittle stars, sea cucumbers, and the sea lilies. Their nomenclature originates from their external spines. A cancerous endoskeleton is actually seen in all echinoderms. Echinoderms are mostly bottom dwellers, though there are few species that are pelagic, living in the open waters. They exist in all depths, ranging from the intertidal to the abyssal zone in all oceans of the world. Echinoderms are not parasitic. They may be browsers, predators, scavengers, depositors or filter feeders. Some are actually commercials with certain species of algae. Let's talk about the characteristics of echinoderms. They possess endoskeletons of plates or ossicles. They have a water vascular system of colomic origin. An opening to the external environment usually attempts the madriporite is actually present. Take note that details of some of this structure will be shown in pictorial form when we discuss the representative of this phylum. They have no heads or no centralized uh, brain. They have radial, biradial, or even pentaradial symmetry. As we are aware, they are non-segmented or non-metameric. Nervous system actually bear the radial nerves and the secomoral rings. Two feet is actually utilized for locomotion, while the digestive system is complete in most echinoderms. However, certain groups lack anus. Colomic cavity is well developed, and gaseous exchange is by two feet, the derma bronchial, genital bursa, and various structures present in various groups of the echinoderms. Sexes are often separate in echinoderm except for few hermaphroditic species. Let's talk about the classification of echinoderms. There are around 20,000 extinct or fossil species of echinoderms and 7,000 living species. Classification is an evolving field and the phylum echinodermata can be classified into the following classes. One, class Quinoidea, which include the feather stars and the sea lily. Two, class Asteroidea. They are actually the sea stars, commonly termed the starfish. Three, class Ophiroidea. They are actually the basket stars and the bristle stars. Four, class Echinoidea, that include the sea biscuits, the sand dollars, and the sea oceans. Five, class Holoteroidea. They are commonly regarded as the sea cucumbers. As you can see from the diagram, they actually look like cucumba, having a, the cucumber shape. Let's take the sea stars, commonly called the starfish, as a representative study of the phylum Echinodermata. There are around 1,500 living species and the, of sea stars, and they are commonly found along the shoreline where they actually gather around the rocks. They also inhabit sandy or moody bottoms, as well as coral reefs. And as you can see from the diagram, they are brightly colored with size ranging from a few centimeters to one meter. Let's take a look at the external feature of the sisters. As you can see from the diagram being displayed on the board, the dorsal view or the upper view, you can see the central disc, the arms, which are actually five in numbers, the madriporite. While on the ventral view or the bottom side, you can see the mouth, which is actually the diagram B, or the picture B. You can see the arms, you can see the oblique groove, you can also see the two feet, the spines, and the sensory tentacles. Sisters possess endoskeleton underneath the epidermis, comprising of minute carcerous ossicles or plates, joined with connective tissues. They have a well-developed colomic cavity. Gaseous exchange, which is actually a standard uh, respiration and excretion of nitrogenous waste product, especially ammonia, or called by diffusion through the two feet or epithelium of papillae. Let's talk about their water vascular system. It actually comprises of a canal system 
and a modified tube feet. It consists of the wing canal, the tears man's body, the stone canal, radial canal, as you can see from the picture, the diagram being displayed, the lateral canal, the tube feet, or the podia, as well as the pollen vesicle. The water vascular system plays an essential role in food gathering, locomotion, excretion, and respiration because it's responsible for the transportation of essential fluid in the body of the organism which transports material as well as working hydraulically in an active locomotor mechanism. Many sisters are carnivorous and feed on crustaceans, mollusks, polychaetes and other echinoderms. They have a complete digestive system consisting of the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach which is around the uh, the central disc, the intestine, and anus. They also possess digestive glands. The hema system and the nervous system in the echinoderms are unique. The hema system is also the circulatory system in echinoderms. It is a network of tubes that navigate throughout the echinoderms body, transporting fluid. While the nervous system comprises of the ring, nerve ring around the mouth, and the radial nerves into each arms, coordinating the tube feet. In reproduction, most sisters have separate sexes. Fertilization is external and takes place in early summer when sperms and eggs are shed into the waters. Note that external fertilization actually means fertilization or call outside the body of the organism. Echinism possesses extreme regenerative ability and can easily regenerate lost parts. They can also cast out or discharge damaged parts, giving them autonomic ability. This is the end of this lecture. In my next series, I will be starting the vertebrate series. Thanks for watching.